Um, I would ask that everyone here please rise as Ohio Treasurer of State Robert Sprague comes forward to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mr. President. We live in a nation that gives us rights and opportunities unlike any other. Please join me in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. President. Please remain standing for our national anthem, sung by Gina Campbell. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly Thank you, Gina. I now ask that all those present remain standing as Pastor Gary Click delivers the invocation. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we welcome and invite your presence into the Ohio State House today. For over two millennia, you've admonished us to pray for all who are in authority. Today, this room is filled with many men and women who fit that description. And so, Lord, we pray that you would bless them with wisdom, with understanding, with favor health, and safety. And Lord, we pray especially today for our president, Donald J. Trump, and our vice president, Michael R. Pence. And we pray that you would bless them with favor and divine blessing from heaven above this very moment. We thank you for the extraordinary vision and leadership that you have granted to them, Lord, that has enabled our country to experience a robust, record-setting economy, the first fruits 
of peace in the Middle East and a vaccine that is ahead of its time and being delivered to frontline workers even this very moment. Lord, we're grateful to you today for your many blessings upon the wonderful state of Ohio. We pray now for these electors as they're about to fulfill their mandate given to them by the people of the great state of Ohio. And I thank you today for the free, fair, and unquestioned elections that took place in this great state. Lord, we ask you now to bless everyone in this room and everything that takes place in the moments to come. And we ask all of these things in the name of the one who is called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. The United States Constitution, federal law, and Ohio law all regard this group as individuals who will organize themselves as the Ohio College of Electors. Section 3505.39 of the Ohio Revised Code specifies that the Secretary of State shall convene the Electoral College so I will now pass the gavel back to Secretary LaRose. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, as required by law, all electors have been notified of the time and the place of this meeting. Electors had until 12 p.m. noon to appear for the meeting of the Electoral College. The record should reflect that the time is now 12:11. Therefore, the first order of official business will be to call the roll of electors to ascertain whether all the members are present, and we will do that momentarily. If there are any vacancies, I will ask the electors to present present to nominate and to elect by voice vote a temporary chairman. You will then proceed to fill any vacancies one at a time by separate written ballot. Section 3505.39 of the Revised Code of Ohio requires that all vacancies be filled in the presence of the governor and the secretary of state and that persons appointed shall be of the same political party as the duly elected presidential elector whose absence requires such appointment to be made. The law further states that in the case of a tie vote, the governor shall determine the results by lot. Governor Mike DeWine will be present to fulfill his official responsibility to both observe the filling of any vacancies and to break any tie votes. I now ask the Ohio Republican Party Chairman, our Chairman Jane Temkin, to call the roll of presidential electors. Madam Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Electors, when your name is called, please respond by saying present. Ken Blackwell. Present. Bonnie Ward, Present. Barbara Clark, Present. Keith Cheney, Present. Mark Wagner, Present. Dave Johnson, Present. Joy Paget, Present. Patty Alderson, Present. Steve Loomis, Present. Rob Scott, Present. Patricia Weber, Robert Paduchik, Karen Arshnikoff, Present. James Wirt, Jim Canepa, Jane Timken, present, Daryl Scott, Madison Jessiato. 
Mr. Secretary, the call of the roll is complete. There are 16 elector electors present and two vacancies. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and thanks, by the way, for all the great work that you and that your team do. There being only 16 electors present, the remaining electors must elect a temporary chair and then proceed to fill the vacancies. I will now entertain nominations for temporary chair. The chair recognizes Joy Padgett. Mr. Secretary, I nominate Keith Cheney as temporary chair. Keith Cheney has been nominated to be the temporary chair. Are there any other nominations? Seeing no nominations from the floor, the chair recognizes elector Dave Johnson. Mr. Secretary, I move that the nominations be closed. A motion has been made to close the nominations for temporary chair. The chair recognizes elector Patty Alderson for a motion. Mr. Secretary, I second the motion that nominations be closed. Having been moved by Dave Johnson and seconded by Patty Alderson, the motion is seconded. And at this time, all in favor signified by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it, and the nominations are closed. All in favor of Keith Cheney serving as temporary chair now signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Keith Cheney is elected temporary chair of this electoral college. Would the chair please come up and preside over the meeting until we have a full complement of 18 electors. Mr. Cheney. Thank you, Secretary LaRose. The next order of business is for the electors present to now appoint a qualified person to the vacancy. Appointments shall be by individual ballot. Let the record reflect that Governor DeWine is present in the chamber to witness the process of the appointment for the replacement of electors. Are there nominations for a replacement for elector Patricia Weber? I nominate Leanne Johnson to replace Elector Patricia Weber. Leanne Johnson has been nominated to replace Elector Patricia Weber. Are there any other nominations for this appointment? I move that nominations be closed. A motion has been made to close nominations. Is there a second? I second the motion. The motion is seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Nominations to replace Elector Patricia Weber are closed. I now ask for nominations for a replacement for Elector Daryl Scott. I nominate Ryan Stenger to replace Elector Daryl Scott. Ryan Stenger has been nominated to replace Elector Daryl Scott. Are there any other nominations for this appointment? I move the nominations be closed. A motion has been made to close nominations. Is there a second? I second the motion. The motion is seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Nominations to replace Elector Darrell Scott are closed. At this time, each elector will find two appointments of vacancy ballots one for the replacement of Elector Patricia Weber and one for the replacement of Elector Daryl Scott within the folders on their desk. Each elector will use the pen that was provided to them to sign their ballots at this time. After electors have marked their ballots, staff will collect them and give them to the tellers.
Thank you. Based on the results of the voting, I declare that Leanne Johnson has been elected to fill the vacancy caused by Elector Patricia Weber with a count of 16 votes, and Ryan Stanger has been elected to fill the vacancy caused by Elector Daryl Scott with the count of 16 votes. A certificate of appointment to fill a vacancy has been prepared for each, notifying the Secretary of State that Leanne Johnson and Ryan Stanger will fill the vacancies. All electors who participated in those votes must sign seven original copies of the certificate of appointment to fill a vacancy, stating the results of their votes. Staff will escort electors one at a time to abide by social distance measures. Please bring the pen that has been provided to you. You will sign each certificate by your name and be sure to sign all seven copies.
Now that all electors have signed their certificate of appointment, I ask that a member of the staff collect the certificates and deliver those to the governor for his signature. The 55th Ohio Electoral College, now having a full complement of 18 electors, I now return the gavel to Secretary of State LaRose. Well, thank you so much, Chairman Cheney. At this time, I would ask the Honorable Maureen O'Connor, Chief Justice of the Ohio Supreme Court, to please come forward and administer the oath of office. Chief Justice. Thank you, Secretary LaRose. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, if you would please stand and raise your right hand. And then repeat after me. I, state your name. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws of the state of Ohio. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office as I shall answer unto God. You may be seated. Well, thank you so much, Chief Justice. I will now entertain nominations for the position of chair of the 55th Ohio Electoral College. At this time, the chair recognizes Elector Joy Paget. Mr. Secretary, I nominate Robert Paducek to be chair of the 55th Ohio Electoral College. Robert Paducek has been nominated to serve as chair. Are there any other nominations from the floor? Mr. Secretary, I move that nominations for chair be closed. A motion has been made to close nominations for chair. Thank you, Elector Johnson. Is there a second to Elector Johnson's motion? Mr. Secretary, I second the motion that nominations be closed. The motion has been seconded by Elector Petty Alderson. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. The nominations are closed. At this time, all in favor of Robert Paducic serving as chair of the 55th Ohio Electoral College signify by saying aye. 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 
All those opposed? The ayes have it. Robert Paduchik is elected chair of Ohio's 55th meeting of the Electoral College. Would the chair please come forward to preside over the meeting? Mr. Paduchik. Thank you, Secretary LaRose. Uh, I'd like to take a moment of personal privilege here. First, I want to congratulate each of the electors here with us today on the role that you, this very important and historic role that you'll undertake. I'd also like to thank the millions of voters in Ohio that supported the president, the tens of thousands of volunteers that worked countless days for his election, the staff of the campaign, Jane Timken, chairman of the Ohio Republican Party, the officers and the staff of that party as well. I would also like to thank uh, the co-chairs of our campaign, uh, Governor DeWine, Senator, Senate President Auboff, uh, Speaker Cup, General Yost, Auditor Faber, Treasurer Sprague, and uh, with us today, uh, Representative Bill Johnson. Um, and now uh, for remarks, I would like to also introduce uh, co-chair of the campaign, and our Lieutenant Governor, John Houston. Well, it's great to see everybody in person uh, and not on a Zoom screen. Uh, as a lot of us have experienced. And, and let me just say uh, thanks to Bob Paduchik. Uh, Bob, I'm gonna just take a moment. To, you know, Bob was in charge of the president's campaign here in Ohio. He did a great job of running that election, that re-election campaign for President Trump and Vice President Pence. Governor DeWine and I, as Bob mentioned, we're proud to be among the co-chairs for the campaign. Uh, for the president's uh, re-election campaign. And, and with 53.4% of the vote and an eight-point margin of victory, it was one of the most definitive outcomes of any presidential campaign in modern history of Ohio. So, Bob, thank you. Uh, I do also want to extend my congratulations to all of you as electors. This is... Uh, a really special thing to be able to do, to be part of the process that our nation has used for over 200 years. Uh, it's a gift from our founders, and it's great to be part of it. Uh, extend uh, special thanks uh, to Chairman Timken. Thank you for your, your service and your work. Uh, I also want to recognize, though, because this is important, you know, as I stand here with a current and two former Ohio Secretary of States in the, in, the, in the room. It's important to recognize all who've committed themselves to the conduct, the operations of our election. Uh, Secretary LaRose, thanks to you and your team. Uh, and also, uh, congratulations and thanks to the local bipartisan, bipartisan boards of elections who at the local level run our elections, including those poll workers who dedicated uh, their day and uh, uh, in the course and the cause of a well-run election. Uh, and I will say, Secretary LaRose, it's great to see that Ohio is still a state where it's easy to vote and hard to cheat. Uh, we, we have a great system in Ohio and when you consider what happened with the process for counting ballots in other states, I hope that many of them will look to our election laws uh, and to how we run elections in Ohio as a template for their reforms. You need not look beyond what happened in many of those states to understand why it's important to have this electoral college process. Uh, and uh, rather than a system that relies just on the national popular vote. I think that uh, all of us who care about elections and care about that process 
recognize the importance of this electoral college process. Uh, it is the third consecutive presidential election that I have participated in the process of casting Ohio electoral votes, all of them in the same chamber. Uh, each one that I participated in, there was a little different set of outcomes. In the first one I participated in, it was Barack Obama who won Ohio and won the majority of the electoral votes. Uh, four years later, I participated in Donald Trump's election where he won both Ohio and the national uh, electoral college vote. And now we stand here today with President Donald Trump winning Ohio's electoral vote, but not the majority of the electoral votes cast in other states. Whether I have stood here excited about the outcome or disappointed about that outcome, I have reverence, and I know we all do, have reverence for the electoral process of our American system and the Electoral College, which I believe is superior to any system in the world. I appreciate what the founders of this nation gave us. In this system, we accept the responsibility to always preserve and protect its integrity. Today as we meet, we have much to be grateful for. At this very moment, thanks to President Trump and Vice President Pence, the Trump-Pence administration, and Operation Warp Speed, vaccines are being delivered across Ohio and the nation. These vaccines will protect our health and jumpstart our economic recovery. I thank President Trump and Vice President Pence for their service to our nation. Now, as this body, and you as electors, cast your electoral college votes for Donald Trump and Mike Pence, may we remember what a blessing it is to be an American. It is a great blessing to be an American. And also, what a responsibility each of us have to ensure that we remain one nation under God in pursuit of liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you for your service. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, now I ask for a motion to designate Ohio Secretary of State Frank LaRose as ex officio secretary of the 55th Ohio Electoral College. I move that Secretary of State Frank LaRose be designated the ex officio secretary of the 55th Ohio Electoral College. A motion has been made to designate Secretary of State Frank LaRose as ex officio secretary of this college. Is there a second? I second the motion. Thank you. Uh, the motion is seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Secretary of State Frank LaRose is designated the ex officio secretary of the 55th Ohio Electoral College. We electors are about to cast Ohio's votes for the election of president and vice president of the United States. The procedures for this are set forth in the 12th Amendment of the United States Constitution. Separate votes are to be taken for each office on separate ballots. After the votes have been cast and counted, the results announced, and the electors will sign six original copies of cert certificates stating the results of their votes. Secretary LaRose has prepared the certificates of votes in advance for this process. I invite the secretary uh, back to the podium to explain this procedure in more detail. Thank you. According to the 12th Amendment of the United States Constitution and Section 3505.39 of the Revised Code of Ohio, each elector 
must vote separately for president and for vice president. According to section 3505.40 of the revised code, you must vote for the presidential and vice presidential candidates of the political party that certified you as a presidential elector. First, each elector will find a presidential ballot within the folders on their desk. Each elector will sign their presidential ballot at this time. And my staff will then collect the voted ballots from each elector. Mr. At this moment, please sign your presidential ballots in accordance with Secretary LaRose's instructions. When all the electors are finished marking their ballots, the secretary staff will collect them and deliver them to the tellers. I ask the tellers to hold these ballots until after electors have cast their votes for the office of vice president. Elect electors, we now please sign your vice presidential ballots. When all the electors have finished marking their ballots, the secretary staff will collect them and deliver them to the tellers. Ask the tellers to proceed with counting the ballots, first for the office of president and then for the office of vice president of the United States.
The electors have cast 18 votes for President Donald J. Trump for president, and 18 votes for Mike, Vice President Mike Pence for vice president. The, Secretary LaRose, I invite you back to the podium to explain the procedure for electors uh, to memorialize their votes. Thank you, sir. Title III, Chapter 1, Section 9 of the United States Code requires that electors shall make and sign six certificates of all votes given by them. The six certificates of votes are here in the well on the tables at the front of the chambers for all of you to sign. These are the official certificates that must be forwarded to the President of the United States Senate, also to the Archivist of the United States, and to the Chief Judge of the United States District Court, certifying that you have met and fulfilled your duties in electing the President and Vice President at this Electoral College. Our staff will escort electors one at a time as to abide by social distancing measures. Please sign each certificate by your name and be sure to sign all six copies. Again, as a reminder, bring your pen along with you. Thank you, sir. The electors will now sign the certificates of votes in accordance with Secretary LaRose's instructions using the pen that was provided to them. Staff, if you'll, thank you.
all of the certificates of votes having been signed in accordance with law, I ask for a motion they be delivered into the keeping of Secretary of State LaRose, who shall distribute them as required. Mr. Chairman, I move the signed certificates of votes be delivered to Secretary LaRose for distribution as required by law. A motion has been made. Is there a second? I second the motion. Thank you. The motion is seconded. All those in favor of uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries and documents are delivered to Secretary of State who shall distribute them in accordance with the law. Is there any other business to come before the 55th Ohio Electoral College? There being no other business to be brought before this college, I ask Ken Blackwell to deliver the benediction. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Remain seated and bow your heads. Let us pray. Lord, through the racing storms of disruption and change and the strong winds of new challenges, our souls are anchored in you. You are our rock. With you, we shall persevere. America was fashioned in your spirit and founded on our intrinsic non-negotiable right to be free. For 244 years, we have been a people, a nation that understands our fundamental human rights are not grants from any government, but rather precious gifts from you. For them, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Psalms 11, verse 3, a question is asked. If the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Ohioans and Americans for 244 years have answered the call to be defenders of freedom and human dignity. As we close our proceedings this afternoon, we rededicate our commitment to appeal to the better angels of our nature. For we understand history is not moved or advanced by blind chance. It is advanced by men and women of dedication and purpose. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and our liberty. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Is there a motion to adjourn this meeting of the 55th Ohio Electoral College? Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn the Electoral College. A motion has been made to adjourn. Is there a second? I second the motion. The motion is seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing no objections, I declare the meeting of the 55th Ohio Electoral College adjourned.